Hello and welcome back ladies and gents. We are live as you can see in the second game picks and bans phase between Rain Esports and Denial EU. If you had just missed the first game it was a pretty one-sided game in the end to Denial with uh, one of the biggest scumbag moves I think I've seen in League of Legends <laughs> but that that Denial of the Pentakill was was quite sick though at the same time. I like it. It was quite smooth. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a long delay, like when you click yes on the surrender vote, so he timed it perfectly. Like, he must have clicked yes just when he started running past the inhib tower. Then, like, four or five seconds later, Woolite's gone under the tower, dashed under, chasing him down. Gonna get the last hit, and it's like, done. Nope. Denied. Best Penta Denial 2014, voted by a panel of Penta Denial experts. Um, myself and Metas, we've probably seen it, well, maybe once, I don't know. I, I, know, I think I've casted three pentakills. Um, Have you ever casted penta denials though? That's the thing. No. It doesn't stick in your head not, quite the same. Well, way, not like that. Not with a surrender vote. That's <laughs> that's a different level of penta denial. Um, but pretty much identical bans, barring Rise, who obviously was played in the first game by Babunia. I definitely don't blame them. Jax has also been banned out. So actually, I say pretty much identical. That wasn't true. Just the two are the same <laughs> with Nidalee and Lee Sin. But Renekton, top tier, uh, top laner, no big surprise. They've already eliminated a bunch of these go-to top lanes for both of these top laners, which is going to open up a lot more things. Yeah, well, basically top lane at the moment, the meta game is this. Ryze beats everyone. Jax beats everyone except Renekton. Renekton beats pretty much everyone except Ryze and possibly Irelia. That's literally how the metagame works at the moment, so if those aren't available, everyone suddenly starts thinking, wait, maybe I can pick Trundle again. And, you know, we go back to, like, the previous meta because there's still a bunch of strong, tanky top laners, but uh, you never see, you never know. I'm, I'm wondering, actually, now, if Rumble is going to start coming back into it because he did get buffed in the last patch. Like, good Rumble players now are going to have such strong traits because if you keep yourself in the danger zone on his heat mechanic, and you get your Q and your W off, which you can do, brings you up to like 95 heat, then you will have a big increase to the shield that he has, and you'll be doing that extra damage which his Q does when it's in the danger zone. So he's really, like, it's really scary strong trades, hypothetically. It takes a lot of skill to play Rumble, though, and that's why you only see like one player in the entirety of the West. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like a constant juggling act playing uh, Rumble because, as you say, Danger Zone is so crucial to how much damage I'll put. I also love Rumble just because a guilty pleasure, pleasure of mine is the movie Top Gun and Highway to the Danger Zone. <laughs> if, you, if you've ever seen Top Gun, you know what that song is. But every time I cast Rumble, I can't get that song out of my head. Regardless, though, all strange things aside, Thresh and Lucian more than likely is going to be played at bot. I say that, they just switch over to Zin, which uh, of course they did use in the first game on Kickers to very devastating effect, so no big surprise they're going to go for him again. Yeah, not too surprising in, as you say, Zin, very, very strong jungler at the moment, did obviously get nerfed along with the Feral Flare there, or, or rather, not that he got nerfed, it's the Feral Flare, and he uses Feral Flare every single game, so it's effectively a Zin nerf, but as it happens, he's still very, very strong early, and that's kind of where his power curve is, has always, has always been. I am curious if we are going to see this Twitch, because Twitch is actually really, really strong. Like, people mm -hmm. are, un are starting to play, and there we go. I I was I'm casting from the stream, by the way, so I'm a little bit behind, like, four or five seconds, because Hitbox is better than Twitch. Um, and that does actually mean that, uh, that, like, seeing that Twitch there is really, really interesting. I know, I'm so smooth. So smooth. The plugs, though. Seamless. So smooth. Silky. Like, it, literally. It is. You could rub your hand across my arm and you wouldn't even know. I don't know where this is no going. No hair. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. There's, oh my god. <laughs> okay, but back to Twitch. Back to Twitch. He was anything but silky and soft and I would not want to touch his arm. Uh, the Ooh. verminous rat. Uh, oh, it's going to be a Jinx. So Jinx against Twitch at bot lane. But what I was going to say is I, I fully agree with you that Twitch is a very strong AD carry. I believe is kind of not necessarily snubbed by a lot of AD carries, but certainly not seen on the same level as the likes of Caitlyn, likes of Lucian, likes of Jinx. But 
Personally, I feel if you build a good comp around Twitch, he can completely decimate. He scales immensely well with his poisons. He scales immensely well with his ultimate and also the fact that he has a stealth and when he comes out the stealth, he has significantly faster uh, attack speed. He's an incredibly strong AD carry. It's just whether you can peel enough for him because one of his main weaknesses is being caught out or charged upon. And when you look who you're against, you've got Zin who's able to jump on top of Twitch and then Thresh. If Thresh lands a death sentence, Twitch is going to be pretty screwed. I actually also, I, I love this composition that we're seeing from Rain so far, because Twitch, in addition to being really, really strong in team fights, what he does really, really, really well is set up picks. And they have got such a good assassin team right now. That three, those three first picks you see there, the Aurelia, the Twitch, the Kazuks, they combo so well together to catch people out in rotations, to catch people out, get killed, if they're just trying to defend a tower like one on three or something. And the other thing is, Twitch's main weakness, he's very strong in team fights. his main weakness, he can't really siege very well, but that isn't a problem if you've got Ziggs, because his passive deals bonus damage to towers, he can build a Lich Bane, he can account for that weakness very, very effectively, and even make it easier, thanks to his zoning tools in the minefield and the satchel charge, to keep people away from the towers and to enable Twitch to hit it directly. So, really, really cool composition, and I also love that Morgana also yeah. sets up picks, also keeps Twitch alive in team fights. It's just that's a re mm, that's a, that's just that composition is just so. The problem is obviously going to be can Rain execute it correctly. Yeah, I was a bit worried for a few moments that Blackjack would go for Karma again because Karma's not a terrible support with Twitch for the same reasons that Morgana isn't. That you can keep Twitch alive with the movement, and also of course you can can slow people and steady the ship a tiny bit but i agree with you morgana for me is the best support with twitch purely on the basis that you you can have both good and bad positive negative aggressive defensive elements to morgana and that allows twitch the freedom to actually go big but i have to say this twisted fate lock-in for niq is pretty huge because mm. twitch goes invisible nope i've got a destiny Twitch goes invisible, nope, I'm going to Destiny team fight you and gold card your face, and then you're going to get completely bursted. Yeah, that's really, really smart, because not only does it reveal the stealth, it also just shows people that are hiding in brush. If you don't want to have to face check something, like say you've got no vision on the Baron pit, you don't know whether they're baiting, you don't know whether they're doing it, well, obviously, just ultimate. The other thing, of course, is that it means you can turn around ganks that are set up by any one of those three characters that they're trying to jump in on, you know, say bot lane, they've managed to engineer a three versus two. They go in, TF ports in, stun card the one who's committed far, far enough. You do tons of damage to him. He goes down really, really quickly. So really do like that as a counter pick to both of it, especially considering he's up against Ziggs. Ziggs is not one of his counters. They're basically just going to be playing a farm lane in the mid. Yeah, exactly. Farm kind of poke at range. Interesting enough, NIQ has gone for Flash and Ghost, so he wants all of the summoners to escape. And can kind of understand why. He has a character that's quite squishy, especially in the early stages, and fairly susceptible to ganks pre-level 6, so definitely a, a smart pickup there from NIQ. And doesn't really need the Ignite, which again suggests to me uh, is that he's going for the exact same idea that you kind of brought up before, Spider, just farming in lane and trying to make plays with Destiny. Regardless, we are going to be on a break in the next two and a half minutes so we're going to cut to a quick commercial break and when you rejoin us we'll be live for game number two
Welcome back. Apologies for the short delay, but we actually had a pause as soon as we went live. So that is the reason why we are just a couple minutes behind where you're probably expecting us to be. But as you can see, we haven't missed any of the action on the Rift. We are in the very early stages. Myself and Spuddington are going to be taking you through game number two. Game one did go fairly convincingly in the end to Denial EU. So it currently sits at a 1-0 in this best of five. And it looks like Rain Esports is going to go for a pretty similar start they did last time. Yeah, I do say though, this time I definitely prefer Reign's picks. I prefer their lane matchups, I prefer their overall composition. Last game, they were kind of trapped into a situation where they uh, didn't seem to be comfortable enough on the Elise jungle to alleviate any of the pressure on the, uh, on the top lane. So, fell behind there, couldn't really manage to get anything done in the bottom lane, and fell behind just all across the board while waiting for Oriana to scale up, which she just couldn't do in any reasonable amount of time so this time definitely a lot better lane matchups top lane could, should go their way early bottom lane could do a tremendous amount of damage comes out of twitch even in the early game but there is still a risk they could fall behind in that stage there certainly is a risk of that happening but we're not going to have the alien invades kicking off like last time where both junglers took opposition red Something we were talking about in the break thus, but while we have this lull in the action waiting for things to kind of peter out and happen, Twitch. He's an interesting AD carry. Uh, people build him in a variety of different ways, and he's not one of the go-to ADs right now in the current meta. What are your thoughts about him? What do you feel is the best build on Twitch? So Twitch is a character where you have to be reasonably flexible. In my view, you're, you are correct. There are multiple good ways of building Twitch. Blade the Rune King first is nearly a must in my view because he's so vulnerable to people, people diving on him. But you can sometimes, even in especially in compositions like this where you've got like Morgana or maybe even a Kale to keep him safe. Actually, top lane, kind Ooh. of going ham there. 
Yeah, both of the top laners at the beginning just were literally stood in the middle of the lane smacking one another over the head. Uh, but go ahead, finish finish what you were saying, Esper. I don't think it's going to kick off just yet. This is top lane. I am trading damage. But yeah, yeah uh, so Twitch is basically right now. Actually, Digger's now going kind of strong on <laughs> NIQ. I want to get my point across here, but basically you can build to be either a massive threat that your team will protect or you can build to be a little bit more independent with the Blade of the Ruined King, with the maybe even double lifesteal items you see sometimes in a Zephyr to keep himself alive, because Twitch has so much inbuilt damage, you can build less than total damage items and still be very relevant. Baboon, you in top now. Oh, that's a flash as well from Nutri, and did force the flash away from Babunia, but again, it's not quite going to secure that kill. It does mean, though... Oh, actually, no, it doesn't mean that. Uh, I was about to say Irelia could freeze where it is. But this is bad now. This is really bad because they can guess that the Kha'Zix has left the lane. And that means Warrior might be about to meet a Warrior. Yes, he is also slowed on the Pillar of uh, Ice. Again, I wanted to say Pillar of Filth. That's that's the old name, Vince. Get with the times. That's, wow. that's so six months ago. <laughs> yeah, it is actually is now as well. Yeah, crazy. But... And is, uh, I thought for a second they were going to collapse a bit harder, but you can see now that Karzix is keen to try and secure this golem or the kill. He'll take the kill over the golem any day of the week. Higgis is taking a bunch of damage, but remember, Flash is not available from Nutri. It's not going to matter. As the taste, their fear comes in, secures the first blood, but Booney is in a precarious position, but he should be okay for now. Uh, uh, oh, oh, that was close. I've got to say they're actually... It might have been worthwhile if Nutri had just jumped in there and gone for the kill. He would have died to the tower, but he could have guaranteed the kill by jumping in and hitting one Q on Babunia. If he had done that, Babunia would not be able to pick up this wave. He would have lost his own double buffs, but they're getting relatively low on... Actually, no, they're not, because he just got them refreshed. Actually, I can see completely why he held on to that. But had he not just gotten a kill on Zin and refreshed his double buffs, it would have been arguably worthwhile for him to die in order to deny Bamunia that wave that was building up at the tower and give Aurelia an edge in the lane, because if it goes on too long, Trundle will outscale her, at least in a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm, Trundle is going to be uh, very difficult for Twitch to shake off. Digger in mid lane doesn't satchel charge his way back to his own tower. There's Nutri as well, who eats a gold card in the face. They have kept kicking slow though, so are they going to be jumping on top of this one? No, there's not quite enough area to go in and my game's froze again. Uh -oh. Please, EUS. No. EUS, please. No. EUS, please. Please not crash arena. No. This is not please. a good thing. It's not taking too long. Come on! <laughs> right now we are uh, we are by the bed of a dying man. Oh my Pull God. through! Come on, EU West. What is with us getting the first game done and then the second game crashes? It's like a reoccurring theme. We are cursed, Spud. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it's not over until the fat lady sings or the error message comes up saying unable to load spectator data. I can I can hear the song, dude. I can hear it in the background. <laughs> it's getting louder. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, Ruben, that wouldn't explain why all the minions are frozen as well. He said it would be funny if the they all pressed all S. minions all pressed S as well. <laughs> He's like, oh, it would be so funny if all of the players just stopped. Okay, how do they make the minions stop, though? There's a fun fact, actually. Uh, the minions are actually all human control. That's why Riot is the biggest company yeah. in the world. They actually employ more people than are on the planet uh, to run each minion there individually. We go. Okay, the fat lady sang. Uh, well, we can try. Okay, we can try loading back in once or twice. But if yesterday is a pattern to go by, uh, that is not likely to help the situation. Uh, we will try. Mm, not looking good. Not looking good at all. I'm going to reconnect as well. However, yesterday, if you weren't, if you guys weren't watching yesterday, and I'd imagine a fair few of you weren't. Um, we had this issue where we had this exact same issue actually two or three times and then we were forced to reschedule the game So we're all gonna try and reconnect to this one. I can see on the stream that Ruben is reconnecting as well Hopefully fingers crossed will be good to go, but something tells me in the back of their mind may not be that simple Well, looking at Ruben screaming. <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> He's just screaming. They're moving. They're moving. It's like, okay, dude chill your beans love so excited by that fact um, but of course guys this bug has showed up in the past and in the past where it showed up 
it does actually work for a little while when you reconnect. It's just that then it stops working sometimes. And, you know, yeah. maybe today will be the exception. Maybe today it will work for a while. Sometimes it even lasts for a couple of minutes uh, before before crashing. So we will at least for now continue and pray to whatever you particularly desire to pray to that it will not give us any shit. Pray to the riot gods, uh, the EUS gods, that it keeps up because, as he says, sometimes you get really lucky, you get five minutes out of it, and then it'll just crap the bed. Um, nearly said something pretty bad there. And like he does take his blue buff though, which was donated across from Kickus, who's now going to recall. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we actually missed too much though as we went off. Yeah, no more kills went down. Dragon did actually fall, so I think yeah. Dragon was picked up. Yeah, I don't actually know who picked that Kick up. Kickus. Kickus Kick got it. Kickus picked that up. So yep. that is going to put Denial a little bit ahead, in spite of the fact that early laning is going much better this time for Rain. I'm actually curious about the top lane, though. Babunia may be going a bit too deep there. Oh, or that's not. a beautiful trophy, though. That, could, wow. <laughs> that trophy could not have been placed any better. And that you saw Warrior squirming. Though. Yeah, exactly. By the way, uh, I just had to fast forward a little bit. Was Was I behind you before? Oh, that's possible because I'm not live as well. I'm about two seconds behind live. Oh, okay. So actually, right, yeah. Okay. What's what's your time, Spud? So we can. Uh, nine, sure. eight, nine, nine, ten. Right, you're one second behind me. I'm one second behind. This is one of the other issues that we. Yeah. Uh, that sometimes when you do have these client problems, you you end up having somebody that's like a second behind. However, you are the color caster, Spud. So I guess it could be a whole lot worse. Yeah, I am going to have to uh, be like, I'm going to pull out my own crystal ball now in order to try and predict when gameplay that will be all in will happen, like maybe two seconds in advance now. Yeah, and uh, judging by how explosive some of these players are and some of the characters are, that could actually prove to be difficult because you've got Twisted Fate, although you do kind of get telegraphed as soon as he pops his destiny. But I'm thinking more along the lines of Thrash, Karzix, that Botlane could really make some plays happen for either side. There's the, uh, the Dark Passage, will keep Jinx alive. Mid lane, Kikis is coming back round. Gold card has not been locked in. There's Ghost, they really want this kill. They're going to be jumping on top of Digger, and indeed they will secure this one. Mega Inferno Bomb nearly getting the return. But here comes Nutri from the side. He's going to pick up one. And he did actually use his ultimate in the process. What did he evolve first there? Oh yeah, he ultimate. did. He evolved his ult. Yeah, he went for the ultimate of all. People are still doing that, even though the uh, duration was reduced. On top lane again. Every single time I seem to switch to top, Trundle is just smashing Irelia out of lane. Mm, it's it's a harder matchup than I had realized previously. I've actually seen it a couple of times lately, and suddenly I originally thought Irelia had an advantage, and she does in the early game, but you have to basically kill Trundle before he hits level sort of 7, 8, 9. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Chewed up has been caught by a death sentence. I don't know if they want to jump on top of this one, though, because that's exhaust coming out. Chewed up will be going down. Both AD carries actually get picked up, but Twitch got the kill, whereas Thrash picked it up for the side of Denial EU. Blackjack's taking a bit, but he'll be okay. So, you know, if, um, if at the moment right now, Rain, their support, his name, gets hooked, is he then in a bot lane, a different bot lane? So if they, if they rotate away, they end up in that lane with Thresh, right? And then they, they, they go away to another lane with Blackjack and Hookers. <laughs> I tried really hard to work that out as when I was... I tried so hard and NIQ is so screwed right now. I tried so hard to work that joke in. The moment I saw it, I was like, Hookers, Blackjack, it's gonna happen. It, I, it didn't really work very well, I'll be honest. But... You never learn if you don't make mistakes. It's true. You, you can't be scared to fail. I, I can't remember who said said that. I think it's been said by a number of people, but someone like Bill Gates said it. And he's he's a pretty successful man, I'd have to say. And bot lane, Woolite's not looking too successful. He's being chased down, chewed up. He's got the black shield, and that's going to force away the flash because Expunge was just a few millimeters away from landing. Hmm, so... We are continuing to see this lane in the top lane being a little bit difficult, and I've got to say right now, Babunia is actually probably tanky enough to dive that with Zin Zhao, so you've got to be a little bit careful here, Warrior. 
Yes, indeed. They're jumping past. Warrior is taking oh. so much, but that's a nice jump onto one of the minions. It's not going to be enough. Though. Or is it? He jumps back onto the minions. Oh. <laughs> yes, kill. I did not see that one coming, but Nutri again in the right place at the right time. Bot lane is flashing up red, is Woolite, so just global action. Nutri is not likely to secure this kill, but Zix is. There's the offer <laughs> from downtown, scores the three pointer, and a bot lane again more action. Here's a destiny from Twisted Fate. Woolite's fallen down, Chewed Up is going to fall as well. Double kill for Jinx. My goodness, 7 to 7 on the ball. That's more than a kill a minute. That was a hell of a zigzag, man. Like, I'm really good as well by Nutri to zone him like just into it and Kickers ended up in a situation where he was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place or a bomb and a tower which I guess counts as a hard place so really really cool stuff and they're so bloodthirsty I don't know if you were watching mid just there but they were just trading for like half their health yeah indeed I also made a mistake before I said expunge and it's been renamed yeah, to contaminate so. It so used to be his E. Yeah, rat a tat tat I see what they did there. Very smart, right? Know. Very well <laughs> done. Thank you, Freak. <laughs> what did it used to be called? I'm trying to remember what his ult used to be called now. Spray and Prey. Spray and Prey, of course. It is. I quite like that name as well. Yeah, it wasn't a bad name. That, I mean, I don't hate rat a tat tat it, 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 it does show you what the name is. Although, actually, no, it doesn't. Because rat a tat tat kind of implies attack speed and it actually gives you attack damage. But hmm. it doesn't really matter. It also implies that there's a gun. That's like the noise a gun would make. So maybe that's only useful if you have gangster twitch. Because that's, that's that sure is a crossbow he's got. <laughs> the last time <laughs> I checked, it doesn't fire bullets. Regardless, Flame Chompers goes down. And we're like, should be alright. Zin, however, can't say the same. Nutri is going to be backing away. Dig is very low. So in fact, in fact, this is looking good. Super Inferno Bomb. In fact, it's not Super Inferno Bomb. I'm getting confused. Every time Jinx and Ziggs play on the same game, I am just, my brain turns to mush. <laughs> oh god, Blackjack, he's trapped in a room with a very angry dragon. Oh dear. And it's not hooked out for him. He is going to go down. That was that was cute though. Angry oh, dragon. Oh, chewed up. Oh, goodbye. That's uh, the extermination mm. squad from Wallite comes in, gets rid of that vermin. Kikis, alongside NIQ Super Race, will comfortably pick this one up. I say that, but Nutri actually come around from the side. He's not able to steal away the dragon and he will be falling as a result. We have a serious rat problem. How do you propose to deal with it? Missiles. <laughs> Missiles are the solution. Um, yeah, a little bit difficult. Top lane is actually still going Trundle's way, but NIQ in mid. Well then, that's uh, a very scary digger. He popped his ultimate to get some movement speed and does land the last dancing bomb. So, I said popped his ultimate, I meant heal. I. It's just one of those days. It is Did one I actually of those say days. heal? I don't know. I can't I remember. Second, I second and triple guess myself. It, my I memory said, is like half a second. So apparently we're homeless casters. So I don't know. Maybe that's one of the reasons why my memory's not so good. I'm not getting the right nutrition. You've been drinking too much. Yeah. Clearly. The, the chat's just like homeless casters randomly. I'm, so, I'm sorry. How can you listen to my accent and be like homeless? <laughs> I'm sorry. Living on the streets, casting yeah. from a dumpster. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but I have a pr like. I, I, I'm not. I'm neither ashamed nor proud of the fact that I went to a public school. Like, I, I, you know, and I say public school, and that's going to confuse anyone who isn't from England, and even half the people that do live in England. But public school means private school, so it's it's a stupid system. But I went to a public school, and I did come away with a bit of a, a, a you know, a reasonably upper class sort of voice. And it certainly... just says something. I don't know what that was. Yeah, I, I don't even know. He randomly says stuff while we're casting. I don't understand any of it. Um, you but... said he said oh. Geordie me life. Yeah, I thought I thought he'd turned I'm into a, someone from where I live. Or used to live. Either way, a uh, couple of things happened there. Nothing really to note. Ultimate was oh, used from Digger. There's the destiny as well at the top lane. So Warrior is going to very likely be falling. The question is who's going to secure the kill? It will be the Boonia. Yeah. I'm going to be frank, I'm not sure NIQ needed to be there for that. I think he missed his wild cards and didn't get his stun card off in time. But, yeah, I think he may have auto-attacked once normally, which was easily enough to tag and get an assist. All about the assist. However, Digger's a long way from home. I'm just going to throw that one out there. And yeah, that's that's typically what happens when you're a long way from home. You get homeless, as uh, chat has shown us in Twitch. 
as Twitch will be taking down this bot tower and that's going to just be securing more global gold. However, I have to say that this game has been a lot more even than the last one. As I mentioned that though, Denial EU are going for this Baron and no one is even close. They're going to get that. That's just a free Baron there. So really, really cool usage there. They know that they've got really fast objective takings between the Trundle, who is building, building nothing but damage items, uh, Zin, who is doing much the same, and the fact they have a Jinx who can just minigun to her heart's content, they take down objectives really fast and really sustained, which is the other key thing. So, yeah, that's that's not a good thing there. We were just saying how even it was, or comparatively even it was, and it just got a lot less even. It certainly did. And this is a very similar pace, though, to the last game as well, where... I, I even remember saying it was quite an even game, and then around 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes, is when Denial started to spread their wings and, and really did start to batten down every hatch and just force away rainy spores. They they picked up a bunch of towers in a row, picked up a bunch of objectives as well, and it, from there on in it was pretty smooth sailing for them. So. Rain are going to have to try and figure out a way to stop this onslaught before it gets a bit out of hand. Yeah, indeed. That's going to be that's going to be a tall order, though. They've definitely still got decent team fighting and decent picking potential, and they need to utilize that, I think, probably most likely to catch Babunia. Thus far, they haven't had a lot of luck killing him, and that will continue to be difficult, but it's only going to get much, much harder now because he's likely now to build pure tank items for the rest of the game, which means that when he's only got a Blade of the Ruined King and two Doran's Blades to keep for uh, as items and his Ninja Tappy, I guess, he's still going to be a lot squishier than he will be later on. Yeah, indeed. As you can see, we do have another pause, which is never a great sign. Uh, let's have a look-see, see if we've been given any information. Just wait, one guy said BRB. <laughs> just, just the casual be right back halfway through a game. <laughs> Gotta go to the loo. Important. Just feel like having a break, guys. See, see you in 10. <laughs> I just, uh, sorry, guys. Uh, if this was you, you, clearly you'd be out for a drink then. Yeah, since, since being homeless apparently... and all. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, if I was homeless, I wouldn't have a PC to play League of Legends on, which again makes me confused because we're. Well, no, that just means kinda... you've got your priorities straight. True. Yeah. I've said I live in a cardboard box, me. but damn it, I have a good internet connection. Yeah, leeching uh, wireless internet from someone's router nearby. Where would the plug sockets come from? You'd have to have a pretty large, inconspicuous uh, power adapter. You'd have like a camouflaged power adapter. Yeah, indeed. Or, I tell you what, you could just make it, eat, like, what you do is you just make it more effort than it's worth for them to stop your power adapter working. So you just super glue it to the floor. There you go. There you go. They can't get rid of it now. Well, someone could just cut through it, though, I guess. I know. They could still, they could ruin it. But then they'd be like, <laughs> I can't get this power adapter off the floor. Oh, well, I guess it must be there for a reason. Even if it's yeah. going out the window into the cardboard box outside in the alley. But it seems that whoever uh, amongst us was AFK has returned to the computer and has decided to grace us with their presence because uh, we are back live again Unlike in Team Coast. this game. And like Team Coast, who dropped out due to quote-unquote technical issues, apparently. Moving on. He's <laughs> 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 just picked up his red and uh, he's going to be rejoining at mid. You can see the ping is coming down to Dragon, but it's not up for another 1 minute 20, so more getting that ward control more than anything else. Oh boy, so Twisted Fate has also started to split push now, which is going to be quite difficult for them to deal with in the long run, I suspect, but obviously he is going to be dependent on that ultimate cooldown, and we'll see if he's able to make a play right now, because if you think about it, Kikis is starting to get a little bit tankier. Twisted Fate could roam up to the mid lane, and that means you have to be ready, you have to have a plan. How are you going to react if the dive comes in? If Twisted Fate ports in, the dive comes in from Zin. How are you going to react to that? At the moment, they might be able to deal with it. And wow, chewed up just got wrecked. He did. So does Maria. Used as well, but at top lane, it's not looking good again for Warrior. There's a Destiny being used, and he's going to go back on Twitch underneath the tower. He gets the kill. Will he get taken down from this tower? No, he won't. But there's the Megro Inferno ball Boom. again, and it does. The second three pointer that Digger has scored from downtown, and. Meanwhile, in mid lane, actually, some more action going down. Super Raze is taking quite a bit of damage. Kick is as well. There's the return ultimate from Woolite through the mid. But it's not going to do enough to secure any kills. Kick is going back in by himself, but he's off by his lonesome. That is so aggressive. 
but it seems to be working so far that Jinx is going to pick up a kill, gets a double kill, and that was a 1 for 3 trade underneath the tower plus the tower itself. Totally worth it there, but wow, I'm surprised because that was so, so risky. If he'd gone down like a fraction of a second earlier, the reset on Karzix would have enabled him to disengage, and then he could have sniped out with Ws to try and push them off the tower. Maybe he figured, even no matter what happened, it was going to be a tower. Chewed up is not actually going to go for that. He was actually looking for Woolite there, but decided not to check the walls. Well, we were talking before about how is Twitch going to build, and it is going to be Bloodthirster into what I assume is going to be Static Shiv or Phantom Dancer, uh, which is a, a fairly standard, I would say, kind of a well-rounded build, but doesn't really make a lot of sense right now in this game because he's getting crunched. Woolite also is going to go down from the poisons of Twitch, and the red buff blues have been transferred over. He's now doing quite a bit to Babunia. There's a the death sentence and not going to want to jump on top of this. It's a four versus two situation and now Babunia finds himself in a precarious position. He is playing Trundle low with a lot of movement speed. Here comes Nutri from the side. Void Spikes has landed but again there is the trophy landing on all three players and that is going to buy up enough time. And meanwhile, surprise, surprise, they're going to take the free dragon. Yeah, I've absolutely got to agree with you though about the Twitch build right now. I don't understand the Bloodthirster here. Obviously, having more lifesteal is nice if you're being dived, but Blade of the Ruined King is very, very good at dealing with Trundle and dealing with Xin Zhao, so that's uh, something that he's going to regret not having. And IQ was ready for this, I think, but maybe not. Oh, but that's oh, a range. lot of damage on top of one another. And again, they do manage to pick up NIQ. It's the second or third time that we've seen this combo coming into effect, and it has been pretty one-way traffic for the last few minutes, but this is the first time that Rain Esports have been able to start looking to push into the opposition jungle and try and steal some of these creep camps away. And in fact, they may very well just rotate to bot lane and try and get this kill on Woolite, who won't be noticed to him is being chased from a, a rat. He has been caught there, but nice Flame Chompers keeps himself alive. Still, look at the damage he picked up in the process. That's a lot. Yeah, the dots are really strong from Twitch. If he gets his W on you, he gets the red buff on you and an auto attack on you, that's going to burn you for not only the auto attack damage, but then like another good 100 HP at least. So now Kickers is in trouble. He is indeed. He's in the middle of a very scary team. However, he's going to uh -oh. flash away to safety. Nutri now is going to be walking over. He gets himself caught. Twitch... He's going to have to back away, but here comes Twisted Fate from the side. He's going to be taking one. He's going to be looking for two right now. They're chasing after Chewed Up and Blackjack. Chewed Up is pretty big with those double buffs, but there's no way he can contend with these three players. Make it four now. Super Aze has joined the fray. One for two trade. Very aggressive play from NIQ, but it paid off. Oh, Chewed Up, though. He yeah. might be able to out-trade him here. He's got man... No, he... No. No, that's, not that's even... Vi <laughs> this is why I'm not Diamond 1. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Look at the difference in items. He is so far behind on just raw damage output. I'd say, though, that kind of situation is definitely where Blade of the Ruined King True. excels. Like, that's where the, the active can seriously swing one-on-one -on -one trades, and... If you consider they're also running a picking composition, I've got to say I would have definitely preferred that item choice this game. But regardless, doesn't really matter now. It's not likely that he's going to go Bloodthirster, Phantom Dancer, Blade the Rune King. Although you could actually construct an argument for doing that even now. He probably needs a Last Whisper first, at least. Yeah, I would be more looking towards uh, Armor Pen because you're against uh, Twisted Fate, has got Zonias, you're against uh, a pretty beefy Zin with a, the components of a Randuin's Omen as well. So he needs to be able to shred through some of that. But yeah, I agree. Blade of the Rune King for me. If he has Blade of the Rune King and something like uh, Last Whisper, if he has the components of an Infinity Edge even, he's going to do a lot more damage in team fights. And then, as you mentioned, he's going to have that secure blanket to just keep himself alive. Hmm, that's true. Interesting here that NIQ chose to use a pink ward for that brush. I think he wanted to make sure that he could retreat safely without being uh, being seen there. Uh, just wanted to make sure. And obviously now he knows it isn't warded for now at least. He may just come back with a normal ward. But at the moment, I've got to say, Rain... I won't say they're stemming the tide so much. They're not. They're not falling much further behind than they were before. And we've got to remind ourselves here, their late game is really, really strong. The same is true of their opponents, but if you are going to try and stall out, at least they've got that hope in the late game that they'll be uh, at least equal or roughly equal.
And they have pretty nice wave clear as well with Ziggs. You can just throw down a minefield, throw a bouncing ball, and that's pretty much the entire creep wave has just been disintegrated. So they can stall this one off for quite a while. It's just whether they get picked off again, because that was the main issue I have to feel from Rain Esports in that first game, is that Blackjack got caught a number of times, and mid laner got caught as well. The shockwaves weren't exactly brilliant, so... All of these things kind of contributed together. This time around, they're playing a lot more steady, a lot more slow, a lot more safe. But I have to feel when it comes down to those 5v5 fights, the experience and the individual talent of Denali Esports is going to shine through. Here we see at the bot lane, the destiny has been used. Warriors taking a lot of damage. Is he going to be able to rinse and repeat from the awesome play we saw previously in this game? Doesn't look likely. Get stunned from NIQ. And in fact, that will secure the kill and this tower as well. And now, because of that, they're going to be engaging a top lane. Nutri's gone in first, but this is backfiring horrifically. Two players have gone down. Shooter put the backside is trying to do as much damage as possible, but he's not really doing a great deal. That's a flash. Play from Super Raise, and that is going to lock Jude up down. He's going to be falling from the teleport as well, firing on in from Babunia. And as if to prove us right, talking about a pick coming in, that's exactly what just happened. I love, I love how Denial just played that. They perfectly read what was going to happen in the bot lane. They knew Aurelia was going down there. They knew they could dive that two and one, so they did it. Then what they did was they knew that engage would be coming in the top because of the man advantage, but they were smart. They knew Babunia hadn't taken much damage going for that dive. That's why Twisted Fate, the squishy one, was the one tanking the tower. And because of that, he was able to teleport up. He was able to ensure that that battle was a victory without even really doing anything because he made absolutely certain his opponents had to run away or they'd be caught in a fight they were guaranteed to lose. And that just meant that overall they came out on top. So really, really fun stuff. And obviously they also then got like three towers in an in here off it. So even if they get Willite here, it's it's small prizes. Oh yeah, definitely. And they're not going to get that because you're against the Thresh and Super Raze is uh, an extremely competent Thresh. The Dark Passage will come good for Willite. They pull themselves back, as you say, got a bunch of global gold from those objectives. Chewed up is coming in here, actually. Oh, cool. I think he's waiting for Babunia to recall and then get the kill. That's exactly what happens. NIQ. Nice red is... card, bro. Yeah, that red card's not really going to help. Although, to be fair, neither would gold, because you've got yeah. <laughs> three players on your face. But, I could open up a potential Baron here. And they they have almost it. no choice. That If they don't go for the Baron here, it's essentially giving it to their opponents. So even though this might end up in a messy fight that they could lose, they might be able to just take it quick enough, actually. They're taking that really, really fast. But Bunya's going to rush in. I don't think he wants to do that, though. He's still not super, super tanky. So really good usage of that pick there. Yeah, they did a nice job of bouncing back in the best possible way, although I would have to say that NIQ overstayed his welcome in mid. There was no reason for him to be out of position so far. He could have just gone back to spawn, picked up a couple more items, and kind of rinsed and repeated with his team. And now he's given a lifeline. It's, it's very brief. It's a small light at the end of the tunnel, but it's there needless, Spud. And I, I have to question a, a bit of the concentration there from Denial EU. Yeah, I think maybe they were just a little bit too pleased with themselves, having made that really clever ploy uh, and made it work oh. for themselves. Yeah, that was close, but <laughs> smite too good. There we go. Uh, I have I to give props, though, to Ziggs in this game. Ziggs' ultimates have been really good. Yeah, they really have. At this point, actually, as well, his ultimate... Uh, nah, there's probably too much magic resist. I was going to say, it's like almost getting to the point where the central part might get oh, like do more damage than smite, but... I don't think we're going to reach that point uh, anytime soon. Still, there's not devoid of hope. Like, Rain are clinging on. They are going to have to contend with this pressure in the top lane and now in the pressure with, with the pressure in the bot lane from Babunia. And the key thing here is to make sure they get vision control. Harp on about it every single time the situation arises. But the absolute key essence in how you deal with split pushing is vision control. If they can't see that you might be coming, they have no choice but to run away. And that gives you opportunities to push out and try and take kills. But the reason why it seems you harp on about it, but is because it, it's completely correct. It's super important. The boonie has been caught out of position here. Trying to recall, but he is so tanky that I couldn't really hope to kill him. I would say, though, I agree with you that when you look at the gold on the side of Rain Esports, a lot of it is in the right places. Ziggs and also Twitch, so AD and AP carries are both getting a bunch of gold and a bunch of items now. Karzix has got a, quite a few kills, and Irelia, although it doesn't have too many kills, too much CS, as we mentioned previously, is just going to scale very, very well. So, if... NIQ, if Denial EU make a couple more mistakes, they could actually end up losing this game. 
Yeah, I, their opponents are still definitely up against it. Rain still definitely in a bad situation, but if they can get just that one or two more kills, and I think the best plan here is to actually go for Twisted Fate when he's ganking, because of course, Twisted Fate, if you gank anyone else, is going to counter gank. So if you gank Twisted Fate, he can't counter gank himself. And as long as you have some hard crowd control, he's not going to be able to port out. The only problem with that, of course, is that Twitch doesn't. He is probably the best at setting up kills. And I, I'm, I'm actually a little curious. I don't know if he's got enough damage to burst down Twisted Fate before he can port out. Probably yes, actually. Mm, well, whereas you could see that Denali before were feeling very confident, they were forcing the issue, they were pushing the envelope, they've definitely gone into a more defensive frame of mind. Obviously, a lot of that's going to be down to the fact they've got Baron, but now Kikis has been caught here. He's going to be audacious, charging back to Nutri, so they didn't get stunned off from Morgana, but here's the ultimate from Zig. That's going to be the first kill going down. Blackjack at the front lines is completely isolating Warlike from this fight. Nicely done, but that's amazing peel from Super Ace, keeping everyone away from Warlike, and now he is ripping through almost the entirety of the opposite side. It's just going to be Warrior remaining a one for five trade in the end. And I've got to give huge props to Super Ace's peeling. Now, that was incredible to watch. Yeah, if they had been able to get that first kill on Zin and then burst out a major damage threat as well, that fight was as good as one. As it happens, they ended up over committing and that is going to cost them the game here because there is no way to save your base when you're all dead. I mean, Morgana might come up. Okay, so Nexus probably going to go down almost exactly as she respawns. <laughs> one second. Ah, oh, she couldn't save it. I'm disappointed. Oh, man. So the, sad. That Blackjack, you could have saved that. Just S cheat. Super Ace's stats, though, man. Three kills, zero deaths, 14 assists. On a support like Thrash, that's typically in the center of everything because of the way that his kit is built. For him to not die and have stats like that is incredible. He's built quite a squishy build as well. Yeah. Zeke's Hell gives you a bit of health. The Face of the Mountain gives you a bit of health. Mikhail's gives you a bit of magic resist, but it's none of these pure tank items. Normally, if you want to survive a fight as Thresh, you need to like Randuins and a Banshees and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, pretty good play from him and closer this time from Rain. Definitely, but still definitely also fell behind kind of from a reasonably early stage. Yes, indeed. Well, the way, whatever way you cut it, that's 2-0 now to Denial EU in this best of five. So if they win the one more game, they will be progressing through. Again, though, huge props. A lot of love from us here at Hitbox Challenger Faceoff for a rainy sport stepping in at the very last minute. And it was literally about three minutes notice that they were given before jumping in because Team Co stepped out. So regardless, they can hold their heads high here, Spud, but we are going to be jumping into the third game in just a few moments as the lobby gets created. So we'll be right back.